hi everyone so today we are going to discuss the topic agrarian social structure and emerging class relations and we will limit this class relations to particularly in agriculture so for the convenience of learning i have divided this lecture into five parts first we will understand what is social structure then we will understand what is the agrarian social structure and what is agrarian class structure both of these have a very little difference then we will understand the emergence of different classes in agriculture society with different time phases and in different forms and to understand all these things we will we'll see the perspectives of different sociologists and thinkers on them because as you know in sociology it is all about the different perspectives at the societies and particularly indian society is so diverse that we cannot just apply one uniform principle and can understand the whole system of classes in agriculture in it we have to apply different different principles as per the different geographical regions different cultural practices followed by different classes in the society so we'll move forward with this structure so first we will understand what is social structure suppose let's take a society name it as xyz and this society has a particular convention for marriage and a system where different people have different status like suppose the women have higher status here and with the status attached roles so women have a role of more authoritarian role here which is commonly with men in any society women have authoritarian role they are the leaders here and uh, suppose the lineage we follow here is patrilineal sorry matrilineal and not patrilineal so you know that kind of different society that is basically the social structure of this xyz society so it is a pattern of interrelated status and roles okay and then constituting a relatively stable set of social relation because these set do not change in one year or you know the say two year they they keep running like this generation by generation and that's how they get consolidated and stable in any society and as i to as i just said that they get consolidated over many years so they are organized patterns of the interrelated rights because every status and every role also gives you some rights as well as responsibilities and obligations of persons and groups in a system of interactions because whatever the people are there whatever the groups are there they definitely will be having some obligation uh, to follow this leader which we talked about and to all they are they are also going to have some rights to claim their property to claim uh, whatever the rights they have been given as per the leader of that society so that's the whole social structure of the society now we will see what is agrarian social structure before that i want to make you understand that indian society mainly is divided into three parts like i have made a triangle here so the first part i will say is urban society or suppose the urbanized parts of india then the second part is rural society and the third part is tribal india or say tribal society which we also understood in last lecture caste and tribe settlements that we also have tribes living in many places of the map and they have different lifestyle they have different culture they are homogeneous groups so that way we can categorize indian society in three main parts which are urban society rural society and tribal india tribal society we can also say this so if we say agrarian social structure will come under which part of the society it will come under the rural part of india why is it so because a part is considered a rural because of the professions there the main profession in mostly mostly rural societies we cannot say that like all rural societies but we'll use the word mostly the profession is mainly agriculture 
so when the profession is agriculture we will have agrarian social structure agrarian social structure means their social structure is decided by agrarian relation between land and agriculture and as per the data of 2011 census we have 6,49,481 villages in India and in those villages out of 100% population 68.84% of Indians live in villages and also the economic section if you see I, more than 50% or approximately 50% are still employed in agriculture so this way is it very essential to understand agrarian social structure because you know uh, to understand the society we cannot just left this part we have to understand the agrarian social structure to understand what is happening in the society how different institutions are working there so as i told you rural social structure they have caste they have class they have kinship and religion so they all have a stable system in rural st social structure but when we talk about agrarian then we only want to talk about the social institutions and rela relations which are based on land and agriculture suppose there will be some people who are not who have families who have kinship relation in the villages but are part of urban system because they have their job there they will not be considered mainly in agrarian social structure because their institutions and relations are not totally based on land and agriculture they have moved away from the these things and they are having employed in the urban settlements so agrarian social structure and agrarian class structure also has a difference when we talk about agrarian social structure we talk about everything we talk about religion we talk about caste we talk about class we talk about kinship but when we derive it to agrarian class structure then we will only going to understand the classes based on agriculture and how they have evolved from peasant society to modern contemporary society where agriculture is more of an enterprise now so there is a quote that soil grows caste which means that soil is of course an agriculture so it, it was a saying that soil grows caste and machine grows class. An example for this is industrialization of 